Is it going? When I was very little, I would, whenever I would hear a certain in instrument or a certain group of notes, I would think of certain food. Or when I eat food, I would hear certain notes or, diff or an instrument. Pizzicato strings. Yeah. Elbows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What key is it in? Starting in B flat major. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is this something new, or every time you eat sirloin burger soup, you, you hear this? When I eat sirloin burger soup. Oh, so it's been in your head for a while. Mm-hmm. Macaroni and cheese. It was like... When I had vanilla yogurt, some sometimes it would be like... Applesauce, I would hear... <laughs> Kind of sound, or 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 other times where it might be like it was mostly like high fists. <laughs> Dan and I, we were married for 15 years. When I found out I was pregnant with Rachel, I thought I was sick, so it was really exciting, and we were very happy. Um, but then I went into premature labor, and she was born 15 weeks premature. God, that was terrifying. They took her away and I was at this other hospital and they treated me like I'd had a miscarriage because they didn't think she was gonna survive. And she ended up at Children's Hospital for three months and we were just about ready to finally bring her home. And uh, they did the last set of routine tests and discovered she had retinopathy of prematurity. And it was already, I believe, stage three mm -hmm. at that point. And the next morning after she was diagnosed, they transferred her over to UCSD and um, did eye surgery the very next morning. And she ended up having several eye surgeries and none of them, you know, there, there'd be a little bit of success, but then the retinas would detach again. And, you know, eventually we just had to come to, to accept she, she was going to be blind. And that was, was really hard. Um, you know, you, you have a child and, and you just, your mind goes all these different directions. You think about all these things that you're going to do with your kid and, and all the things you'll experience with them. And suddenly, 
half of it's wiped out. And so much of life is visual. And it, it was a hard adjustment to make. You have to move forward. I think that's what Rachel got from that too, is you just have to keep moving. And you, you may not, think things may not be perfect, but you can make it work. It all started when Rachel began pounding on the family piano. I took her, took her hand and said, okay, let's play gently, and showed her that she could gently play the, the notes. Soon Rachel began playing octaves and harmonies and entire movements of Bach and Beethoven after hearing them just a few times. We, we would tell people about what she would do, and they go, yeah, right. How many four-year-olds are playing Bach fugues by, by ear? I have no idea. I haven't met any. <laughs> Her pitch is so perfect, she can't stand to hear something played in the wrong key. Bad for the ears, because it's not right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the joy of music, a gift given to a child. A magical, mystical triumph of sound over sight. Larry Himmel, KFMB News 8. When Rachel was born, during that time, uh, the, uh, the nursing staff um, allowed me to bring my guitar in uh, to play some music. <laughs> and I, I wrote this piece for her. She was my serendipity. <laughs> It does concern me that, that there are certain parts of her life that are not um, as developed as I, I would hope, you know, for her. Um, but she'll, she'll, she'll grow just like she has grown. You know, she'll do better as time goes by, and her life will just continue to, to blossom, you know? Walking on the pier was, was a blast. Um, we just enjoyed the fresh air, um, the, the sound of the ocean. She always liked the sound of, uh, of the water uh, breaking underneath here. And I just, I learned to appreciate more of those things. But just holding her hand, carrying the guitar, just talking, uh, whatever it was we were talking about, I can't even remember because we were just, you know, basically just hanging out and spend, spending some afternoon time together.
We called it the Moonshiners. Yeah. For better, we played everything. It, uh, I was always lucky to have a real good lead guitar player to play. <laughs> Most of well, two of them we had, and the last one for so long. We've had a good life. Mm -hmm. Well, 57 or 80. What, 58? 58. Yeah, 58. I got a year off here. <laughs> I, yeah, I love her. She's she's my sister. But like, uh, it's kind of annoying because like, apparently not much people know that I'm her younger brother and I have needs too. And mom, she'll be telling me how she'll get Facebook messages like, ah, oh, what the heck? Why isn't Rachel doing this? Why isn't Rachel doing that? And it's like, because she has to support two kids, you know? And she can't do it all. She's not a superhero. She's a super mom, but she's not a superhero. And it's like she's trying her best with what she has. So like, I'm seven years younger, so I'm at a bit of a disadvantage because Rachel's already doing all this like crazy stuff with her music and I'm just like, I, I do things too. Look at me. I like to draw. And I remember I couldn't get an art class and she was really angry about that because she knew that's what I cared about. And then she's like, why? Why can't you have like this art class? and then like they got figured out so now I have art and I feel really lucky to have Rachel as a sister because I couldn't have gotten a lot of the stuff I have now because because Rachel she's so talented and stuff she opened a lot of opportunities for me but at the same time I'm kind of like in her shadow most of the time You were chasing Barbie dolls. I found my own prince charming and moved on. I never thought you'd give me a second glance. So when you asked if I was free, all I could think was finally. But I'm finally free this time. And I I first ran across Rachel uh, when I was uh, looking on YouTube, of course, I think, as mo a lot of people have, because that's one of the only places that she's really out there. And I was uh, looking at, you know, different covers, and I think I was looking up some ELP, and I happened to run across the video of her playing, and, and uh, was watching it and thinking, wow, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of covers, but this is, like, a little bit more than a cover. <laughs> I started reading the, the uh, description of it and realized that she was blind. And but still, I was just stunned by the the uh, performance of the whole thing and the and the feel of the performance and the uh, the emotion and the uh, the reality of the performance. It was it wasn't like she was just doing a cover. It was like she was actually the person, you know, that had written the music and had originally played the music. So that part of it uh, uh, intrigued me to the point where I thought, well, who is this person? <laughs> I've never heard of her before. And then I looked at her flute videos, I looked at the, uh, the regular piano videos, and like I say, I started r researching who she was. Then, then the story about how the house had been robbed and how people had uh, taken a lot of her musical instruments. Burglars took all of Rachel Flowers' wind and brass instruments, including some borrowed from her high school. They broke in through a window of her Oxnard home during a power outage Sunday afternoon. I know I'm missing an alto sax. Uh, the flutes, um, alto flutes, my Bose headphones, which were from my teacher, my laptop, which had my 
English work. For Rachel, music is her heart. To see her cry like that when I told her that her flute was gone, and, and it was just like one thing after another, oh God, the flute's gone, the alto flute's gone, the saxophone's gone. If I don't have those instruments, I'll probably forget how to, how to, how to do things. Through, you know, all that rigmarole, she sat down at the piano and just played for like an hour, and, and it's like she got her joy back. It's hard for the 17-year-old to comprehend why someone would steal. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not really sure. I don't know if they thought that it was an instrument that I, that they wanted to play. Our interview was cut short by the lunch bell. Like most things, it's music to Rachel Flowers' ears. <laughs> it's a D. Hundreds of people responded back in, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And helped out. People who comforted us, people who showed up with pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people who um, watched my house for me while I was at work. Oh, my neighbors um, kept an eye on the place for me. The kids at school. One of the one of the kids at school sold cupcakes, That's right. and collected the money <laughs> to help Rachel out to replace her flute. That's right. Yeah, I mean That's the cool. yeah the things people mm -hmm. did. It was extraordinary. Yeah. Initially, I sent her a, a little note through YouTube, and said, "Hey, I'm you know a piano technician up in Seattle." I said, "You probably think I'm nuts, but I wouldn't mind coming down and tune the piano for you." I, I drove down and. Met Jeannie for the first time, walked in the house, gave her a hug, and she, uh, she's like, I, I, I can't believe you, you drove all the way down here from Seattle. <laughs> so, but anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. In that respect, uh, that not giving up part of her, you know, um, I had gone through uh, cancer treatment, you know, a few years back, and, uh, like a stage four throat cancer and was faced with my own, you know, demise. Uh, and, and you have to go through that whole thing um, anyway. You, you reevaluate what, what you're doing with your life, you know. It really kind of bothered me in a sense that here's somebody that really wants to do something. She knows what she wants to do, and yet she, she really can't do it. It's like these things holding her back. So I thought, well, if I can go down and, 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 and help her, that, that would be something that I would want to do in my life. Uh, this is no. You got your microphone high for you, but she's cranked up. But I brought something else for that later. So I'm talking about this, on this thing. This thing. No. Well, there's the bass there. I want to turn down a little reverb. It's a little that, bit that's, that's too what much. I was say. The reverb. Let's go. Let's go to the reverb and turn it down a little bit. It's on cathedral right now. Um, you want me to just turn down the amount of decay on that? Is that the one you're thinking? Yeah. You want to keep that? Yeah. How's the, how's the reverb for it? I think we already turned that one down. Yeah. Bit, so. Actually, I want to read. I want to redo a couple parts. Uh, I wasn't too fond, I wasn't too proud of the Let beginning. So of our model tracks. I'm using. Uh, where's the headphones? Oh, never mind. I found them. So I'm, I'm going to redo some of a couple of the vocal parts. Uh, Warm up.
this one and, and find out what time they're coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you awake? Did you sleep with your phone? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you give them a call and find out what time they're coming, okay? Mm -hmm. And you need to get a shower. Okay. Alright? Yeah. Yeah, it's really uh, yeah. This is uh this is Rachel. Um I'm calling about confirming my trip for today. Okay, I'm going to throw together your lunch. Mm -hmm. Do you want to come on out? You got everything there? My computer's still on. Oh, okay. I'll let you do that. I'm going to go get your lunch. Got it. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. There you go. I love you, sweetie. Love you, too. You have fun today, all right? Okay. I'll see you when I get home from work. Morning, Rachel. Morning. 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 I, I wasn't much of a talker when I was very little. I was always into listening to music, but I never really understood like how to socialize and be around people and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean it's it's just been it's been the three of us for a while now, and and it, it, it's been tough, and and I've had to rely on some other people for help at times, especially when the kids were younger, and you know I was trying to work, and I've got Rachel at school in one place, and Vaughn at school in another place, and I felt pulled so many ways sometimes. I go to the Brill Institute in Santa Barbara three days a week. 
Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Being at the Braille Institute, I got to learn how to speak out and do a lot of fun things. people not, they may not recognize about me is uh, the fact that I am blind as a bat. Um, I was uh, born with a congenital eye condition, um, uh, congenital nystagmus and ocular albinism and, and all that. And it, basically what it comes down to is where the optic nerve connects to the eye, um, it's, a, it's just a bad connection. The chromosomes broke down before they, they weren't done when they were finished. I, I found myself only a few weeks ago standing in the middle of the street again against a red light, and it was only two lanes, one direction. And uh, I started working with the cane um, in the last few months, and I, I don't always have it with me because I keep forgetting I need to give this more credit for my safety. And a few days ago, I stepped out 
from behind my car, taking something out of the back, and, I, and it went clear, and I stepped into the street, and I stepped right in front of the car. My dad, Dan Flowers, he's starting to lose his vision. It was a little difficult at first. I remember he used to drive a lot, and now he can't do it. I think I would like to help him out with certain certain things. Like, and has Rachel given you any pointers on, on how to use the cane? We never really had to spend a, a, a lot of time together. She's she's been so busy with uh, different uh, things she's got going on. Her method of travel is going to be a little different than than yours because right. you can still see landmarks and mm -hmm. for the most part you can see the upheavals and sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes but, sometimes I can kind of tell if I'm going to another place from like the feel like if it's more sunny or if it's more windy. Well, excellent, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't even have to think about that, it's just something you process, right? Yeah, and what is that feeling that's like, you feel like something's getting closer to you? Yeah, they call that facial vision. Mm -hmm. So actually, if there's a tree overhead, you can feel that sometimes. Yeah. yeah that, that's a really good skill to have, not everybody has that. Mm -hmm. When she was two, mm -hmm. um, she used to do something in our apartment where she could get around, walk up to a wall, stop, turn, and walk over to the next wall, stop, turn, and she could move around, go into the kitchen, stop, move down over here by the stove, stop, and never touch a single wall. And it was because we realized the room didn't have a lot of stuff because we had just moved in. Right. And just the reflections of yeah, the sound bouncing on the walls, she could hear herself as she approached the wall. Through the uh, through the grocery store with, with Rachel was a kick. Um, it's not as if we hadn't done it before, but the last time she and I had had done that, a, a lot of time had gone by. There's like I said, there's a lot there's a lot of things and changes in our lives, um, but then we find ourselves walking between these these shelves and these aisles and these islands of various pieces of fruit and vegetables and all sorts of things. And um, it was interesting to kind of hand her something and say, well, what do you think this is? And she's like, hmm, I'm not sure. Well, let's see. What does it feel like? Is it smooth? Is it bumpy? Is it long? Is it slender? Does it feel sticky? Um, we discovered the difference between a cucumber and a, and a zucchini. And sitting there in that room, uh, the computer lab at the Braille Institute, um, having her talk about what they were going to show me how to do for the adaptive parts of using the computer, that, you know, before long, that's, that's going to be my, you know, uh, avenue into the computer. It's going to be through these special techniques. Well, that's nothing to her. Well, on a PC, they have a thing called JAWS, which is the screen reader, so it'll read to you what's on the screen. And instead of using a mouse, you use the letters on the, on the computer keyboard. And the program I use is Sonar. I'm able to go to all the different parameters, like I could control like reverbs and mixing and all that stuff. Thousands of results. Here we go. Standing in line. Standing in line. Parking time waiting for the welfare time cost they can buy a job. A man in the silk suit hurries by as he catches the poor old lady's eye just for fun. He said, get a job. Quotation mark. That's just the way this is. Can you 
understand to think that way Did you really think about it before you made it? Rachel maybe four years ago, three, four years ago um, at Stanford Jazz Workshop. She instantly jumped out uh, to me as someone that um, was just kind of light years ahead of all of the other people in the room in terms of how she could hear things. There was a lot of different pianists. There was maybe 20 pianists that were all crammed into this room and I was doing, um, I was just showing different exercises, showing different concepts and all that and and she, I just remember there was one moment where she was like, oh, you mean like this? And she just nails it, you know, just completely. I'm like, well, that's better than how I played it. So, uh, yeah, totally. She is, she's like a legit prodigy. <laughs> she's, she's just, just freakishly talented, just un unbelievably talented. And, um, you know, that to me, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by her ability. You know, I remember hearing her when she was 17 and she was, you know, absolutely brilliant so you know I mean to me that's it's cool because it means that sometimes people will take an extra listen you know if you get to be called a prodigy that sort of thing so do you know the tune Nardis? Mm -hmm. I was listening to so many players that at the time I, I was into Taylor Ixty. So a lot of my playing was very sort of similar because I couldn't, it, I was still trying to find that sound. I'm a big fan of having like an extra keyboard player, you know? Uh -huh. And, um, but there's so much you can so much we could do.
new text reading. <laughs> Straighteners. <laughs> we have a tool for everything. Oh, you're tools. so pretty, Rage. <laughs> wow. And you also want to go in your Unless hairline. you're going for Halloween. Otherwise, at home I don't use because it's got color on top of it. <laughs> I like the piano. It's really nice. It sounds fantastic. How many people are in here? It's pretty full. Wow. small people were saying oh she should be on Leno she should be on Oprah and then you know as time progressed she, it was became Ellen and then it became you know America's Got Talent and and it just never felt right to subject her to that atmosphere it's a marathon you know it's not a sprint <laughs> that's what that's the way we've always looked at it from the time she started playing she deserved to have the same kind of training as a sighted kid who would have the same level of talent or, you know, the same aspirations. She has to rely on her other senses more. 
she has to rely on what her cane tells her, so she has that, that tactical kind of thing going. And she has to rely on what she hears. I used to drive myself nuts just trying to think, okay, how does she perceive the world, you know? What, what is it like for her not even knowing? You know, it, it, would be, it would be hard enough for me losing my sight now, but having never had it, how do you experience life without even that frame of reference? Last one enough. Piano can turn number three. A big audience. You know? They'll yeah. Be to sign autographs pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. yeah that's, a nice... that's cool that keyboards are doing that. It's, it's, I thought it was like only like software libraries that allowed people to do that. I met Rachel at five and I immediately knew that we have somebody that's not one in a thousand musician, but one in 10,000. And I've been around amazing musicians. What I did not know yet at that point was whether she would be able to compose. And I did not know whether she would be able to compose originally. <laughs> What mood is that? David introduced us to another of his students, 11-year-old Rachel Flowers. Rachel is also blind and a musical prodigy. David teaches Rachel piano. The flute, she's teaching herself. She picked up the flute five, six months ago, and now she can play in a nightclub as a jazz flautist. She's just amazing. And she's improvising. technique just blossom. I didn't also know whether she'd be a, 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 an excellent pianist, but mm -hmm. I found that out slowly that yes, mm -hmm. she has the capacity and she's exhibiting it now to be like top rate technique, just fabulous, mm -hmm. on the piano and on, on the flute. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, it's the drummer, the guitarist, the bass player. This is Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Ra Rachel. an amazing player. I saw her play at NAMM. Wow. Hey, I gotta tell you something. Hey, she is, she is scary. She plays the flute, the guitar. Oh my God. And the piano and all kind of things. Doesn't matter, classical, blues, jazz, whatever. Oh my, oh my goodness, <laughs> whatever. Wow. Whatever. Oh, She's amazing, man. Amazing, oh, amazing, nice. amazing. Okay. amazing. So, You're 21 now? Mm -hmm. Oh, watch out. Now you can drink <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> don't do it, okay? No, don't. Don't do it. <laughs> are, you, are you originally, are you born and raised here in LA? Uh, I was born in San Diego. Nice. I'm gonna look you up. For. What's your last name, Rachel? Flowers. Flowers. Rachel oh, yes. Flowers. You're also a double on flower. Yes. You are a flower. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, double flower. <laughs> double flower. I, I still remember, like, after the performance at the at the Ventura? student jazz thing, like, yeah. Rachel, flowers. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Raquel Flores. Raquel Flores. Raquel Flores. <laughs> Vámonos. You know what? She, she have a, you know, she's lying to me. She got a tape recorder inside the brain. She got something. She got a, an extra computer there with a, with a bunch of uh, uh, hard drive there. And, and, and <laughs> I would like to share with you. Mm -hmm. Just stay where you are. It's okay. with one hand at a time. Oh, 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 no, no, maybe with two hands. Oh. Like do it. Yeah. Yeah. One one finger just to keep your, your position. Uh -huh. Keep your, your position to the C to G. And then. Rachel, I promise you, when you finish that, mm -hmm. your finger fly all over the keyboard. It's mm -hmm. something amazing, wow. amazing. 
And music, is, I always said, it, it's, it's like a balm for the soul, you know. When, when you got the music, you, you feel so, you know, embraced by something magical, something yeah. you, we have no words to express, you know, mm -hmm. how, how important is the music for, mm -hmm. to, to keep our spirit alive, and especially yeah. in the school and stuff. It's extremely mm -hmm. important to yeah. keep teaching music for kids. Fun. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Cool seeing these kids who are just learning to play. Yeah. <laughs> Violins and cellos. They're hard instruments. <laughs> They have a class where they just take walks along the shoreline. She came home one day from that class and like instantly went to her room and wrote a piece called Shoreline that she composed in her head as she was walking with the class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
know here I'm hearing a lot of waves, big waves. Crows. It's pretty cool, like hearing the waves. It's like they're going, like I'm hearing them on my left, and then they they sort of, like they start on my left, and then they go to like the center, like like a stereo kind of a thing. It's pretty cool. I just sort of heard the song out of. We were feeling like one spot was really sunny and then like, it was like the sun was one direction and the breeze wasn't like another. Usually I would actually hear it in a dream, but this one I didn't hear, I just kind of sort of imagined it. I was already hearing the band in it, I was already hearing like the shakers and like the strings. And that was sort of like how Shoreline started. Usually it's just like a little fragment, a little short sound bite that I would hear in some dream at night when I'm asleep and then usually when I would wake up I would turn on my recorder and hum it or sing it or if I'm close to a keyboard I'll play it and then later on I would develop that. Usually in the dream it's like, it sounds complete. first questions are right here at the beginning. I think this is going to be one of the trickiest parts. Um, yeah, it's pretty tricky. The, I wanted to ask you, it seems like every couple bars, mm -hmm. there's kind of like a, a lift or a pause. It's like, yeah. bah, through the hole. Like when the when the strings stop and they play, the, and the rest is silent, do you want those steady notes going through the, the pedal tone, the ba The B flat? Yes. Yeah. You do want them going through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, beginning? so this guy goes through. Yeah. Da -da. And they string stop and he continues.
okay, I quit. I quit playing on the I'm putting me out to the pasture. I was nine when I first heard Keith Emerson's music. I was really excited when I finally got to meet him. Hi, Rachel. It's uh, Keith Emerson here. We're actually at Abbey Road Studios uh, mixing the uh, the new album, yeah. which is orchestral. So, uh, Rachel, I understand that you are uh, checking out the latest modifications for my Moog synthesizer. That's great. So, uh, have a good go at it. Let me know how it turns out. Uh, so, all of us from here, from Abbey Road Studios, London, lots of love, Rachel. Bye. He gave me a baton for conducting. I'll always enjoy playing his music. He was an amazing keyboard pioneer. Welcome to the QSC stage here at Winter NAM 2015, Mr. Dweezil Zappa. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. I know, uh, Rachel, I got to meet you. I got to meet you. I've, I've heard you're uh, playing. You're, you're amazing. Yeah, I have not had a chance to see the movie that they've made about you, but I... Uh, you're still working on it. Yeah. Uh, in just a moment, I'm going to come in. You know what? I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to come shake your hand. You know, I, I love that you had the interest in doing it and that you took it that far, you know, that's that's the thing that's so cool because, you know, that's not just a song that, you know, you just pick up and learn. That, that I'm sure that took some time. Yeah. But you played everything. So how did, how did you decide that that was the song you were going to do? I don't remember. I think I first looked it up or something. I, I heard the one size fits all version. Yeah. That's so cool. But you heard it and you said, yeah, I can do that. Well, we're going to be uh, playing that song on stage uh, all year. So if you ever at a show, wow. you want to come join us, you know, you can mm -hmm. come on out. Wow.
Your name? I'm Jeannie. I'm her mom. Jeannie, pleasure. Very nice to meet you. So let me lead you both on stage. Cool. Great. Follow me. Wow. All right. This is so exciting. Okay. So, oh my God, there's a gigantic keyboard rack here. Watch the cable there. Wow. And here's Weasel. Hi. <laughs> How was your trip in? I liked it. Okay. It was yeah. fast. Good. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. <laughs> now there's people for you to meet. You yeah. guys want to come say hi to Rachel? Yeah. Cool. Hi. Hi. This hi. is Kurt. He's the bass hi. player. Hi. My hands Kurt are very Morgan. cold. Hi. Very hi. nice to meet you. Hi, hi Kurt. This is Sheila Gonzalez. Sheila. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Ryan. Hi. 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 How are you? Drummer. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Good Look to forward. Meet you. Look forward to playing with you. Yeah, it's very exciting. Awesome. And uh, over this so way, this is uh, Ben Hi, Thomas. Hello. Ben Thomas, pleasure to meet you. Really nice excited to, to play you. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Kate Solo on Heaven. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you want to sing and play it, like sing and play the chords, mm -hmm. and then maybe play a solo with, uh, with the flute, that would be cool. And then later you could do Montana and sing that and play a guitar solo, and mm -hmm. we could play together. Mm. So maybe it's something like that. On Anchor Roads, would you rather do the flute solo or the keyboard solo? The keyboard solo. Keyboard solo. Okay, <laughs> you could do a keyboard solo. That's that's cool too. No problem. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. So my throne's right here. set up to a fourth right now. Mm -hmm. I like it. that. You like that? Cool.
She plays guitar, and when you hear that, I mean, you're just gonna be like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Let's keep going with one size fits all. Richard, you want to sit back down? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not prepared to let her go yet. The process is, you know, it's going, but it's hard. You know, she's my baby. <laughs> you know, I've always told her too, you know, if you want to stage at home, no, you can. I don't have a problem with that. And so she can live with me as long as she wants. But she does want to be independent in a lot of ways, and that might be part of it in the future. She might want to have her own place. You know, she might meet somebody and get married, and then it's totally out of my hands. <laughs> so I have to be prepared for that. Just a moment, we're going to bring out a woman who has learned to play many instruments, but you see, she uses her ears as her eyes for the world. Her name is Rachel Flowers. How about we bring Rachel out for one more song? Rachel. They're making a little movie about uh, Rachel called Hearing is Believing. And I'm sure it will be really cool when it's all done because she's done a lot of really cool things with music. And this is just one more thing to add to her list.
guitar. Rachel Flowers, ladies and gentlemen, nicely done. Well, they passed the law in 64 to give us who ain't got a little more. Well, it only goes so far. This law don't change in others' mind when all it sees is the hiring time. It's the line on the color bar. No, that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. That's just the way it is. That's just the way.